Innal hamdalillah Innal hamdalillah Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu Wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina Wa min sayyiati a'malina Man yahdihi allahu fahuwa al-muhtad Wa man yudli allahu falan tajida lahu waliyya murshida Innahu asdaqal kalamu kalamullah Wa khairul hadi hadi muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wa sharrul umuru muhdathatuha Wa kulla muhdathatin bir'ah Wa kulla bir'atin dalalah Wa kulla dalalatan fil nar Faqala Allahi azza wa jal fil Qur'an al-Karim Ba'da a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatih ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال الله عز وجل أيضا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا أما بعد الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيبنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن اهتدى بإحسان إلى يوم الدين فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ثلاث من كن فيه وجد حلاوة الإيمان أن يكون الله ورسوله أحب إليه مما سواهما وأن يحب المرأة لا يحبه إلا لله وأن يقرأها وأن, يقرأ أن يعود في الكفر كما يقرأه أن يقذفه في النار أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. My dear brothers and sisters, we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa taala with the best of praises that we send our salam and salutation of on our beloved Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم upon his family, upon his companions, and upon all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time. My dear brothers and sisters, today. We remember Allah and we remember our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as we sit in the masjid in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to serve Him, to obey Him because we all understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Lord and we accept this. My dear brothers and sisters, in today's complex and fast-paced world, we as Muslims, we face unique challenges in following this obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In our society today, we face different kinds of pressures of secularism and cultural assimilation in which we are in a constant clash with our values as Muslims. And how do we obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much so that we find many Muslims today find it difficult to hold on to our identity as a Muslim. This is particularly f fueled and relevant because it provides, it provides a ground in which many people are pulled away from what being a Muslim is supposed to be. Being a Muslim today, especially in our society, is so much more difficult than a person who would have grown up in an Islamic environment in which all they know is being a Muslim. So this hadith that I would like to remind myself first and each and every one of us here today, it is relevant because it provides us with a blueprint as given to us by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for his teachings his words, his actions, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are a gold mine for each and every one of us. This hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says to us, Whomsoever possesses the following three qualities, 
will taste the sweetness of Iman or the delight of Iman. And the first thing that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the one to whom Allah and his messenger are dearer than anything else. There's no equality to it. The second one is a person who loves a person and he loves him only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third thing this person should possess is that he hates to revert to kufr as, the, as much as he hates to be thrown into the fire of Jahannam. And this is a saying of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So my dear brothers and sisters, how do we understand this hadith? The first point is made here is loving Allah and his messenger more than anything else. And what is our understanding of that? For Muslims today in this part of the world, especially in America, this quality can be difficult to cultivate due to the pers pervasive nature of our culture within our society today. We have a society in which our mentality is focused on materialism, accumulating things of this world, accumulating the goodies of this world, the material things, in which our mentality is focused on individualism, I, 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 not so much of others. The society around us encourages us to prioritize our success in our careers, our personal ambitions, and societal acceptance for people to like us. All of this comes above our commitment to this religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of it, everything we prioritize because we will sacrifice our obedience to Him for these things. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He guides us through the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because why? All of these realities of our life here can lead to a situation which it has already led to in which Allah and His Messenger are no longer the primary focus of a Muslim's life. Ask a normal child today, how do we show love for Rasulullah? They know it. I know it. You know it. They know it. We should love him. We should love Allah. Do we even remember how do we love Allah? How do we love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Practically, we can implement this in our life by firstly setting our priorities straight. Anything we want to achieve in life, if we want to accomplish something, we make sure that it's a priority in our life. So that's the first thing we need to do. Every decision in our careers, our friendships, our daily activities, we sacrifice something in order to accomplish that. But all of these things can be accomplished if we do them with the intention of seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something simple as that. And as we go through this, we will understand why that is so important. Remember that you are seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, if you're seeking a career, then make sure that that career, number one, is not an earning from haram. Because why? Allah and His Rasul comes first. Make sure that this career will not take you away from the compulsory actions upon you. Will not take you away from fulfilling your duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as an individual first. Meaning if you have a job that will prevent you from, mis from performing Salatul Jumu'ah, then that's not a job that you should take. That is what, where the priority is. Because when we choose that job over fulfilling this commandment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we are prioritizing, we are putting more importance to our job and our career above our salah, salah to Jumu'ah a man. Similarly, if our job is going to take us away from performing our five salawat, at its prescribed time and we choose to do that job over and over without seeking a way out of it then that job now becomes our priority not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Rasul 
not Allah and His Rasul. Sometimes we get so caught up, this job pays me a lot of money, you know, and all the conveniences that it offers us. And I'm speaking specifically about jobs today. Students have more, spe more flexibility, but adults, grown-ups, we set the example for our youth. Your child will follow what they see you do. Your nephew and nieces will follow what they see you do, not what you tell them to do, what they see you do. Your values, I've seen many people as immigrants to this country, especially from those of us who would have come from an Islamic background, very often I will hear elders saying, why is my child not adhering to Islam? I tell them, I send them to the masjid, but as we examine our lives, we find ourselves, we are not being the examples. Children don't listen to what you say more than they listen to what you do and see what you do. Sacrificing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires making difficult choices. This is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to us that none of you will have iman until I become more beloved to him than his father, his children, and all of mankind. The word love, the word love, love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but come, must come from knowing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, must come from being embroiled in the knowledge and the appreciation of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but that will not come from ignorance, that will not come from you putting that aside. Right? Absence makes the heart grow fonder, you see. But now when it comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the more you detach yourself from sending the road upon him, from following his sunnah, from obeying his commandments and his guidelines, the farther away we go away from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is challenging us to evaluate where we are willing to make sacrifices for our faith. We are proud to be Muslims today. You go on social media, I am a Muslim. We fight for Muslims. We are so loud about it. But where are our actions to back up our speech? Where are our sacrifices to protect this religion first within ourselves? A few things that we can do to improve this. Regular recitation of Quran, the dhikr of Allah. One of the best forms of dhikr is the recitation of Quran. We'd have grown up as kids to, to hear that the Quran should not become filled and covered with dust in our homes. How many of us even open an app on our phone and recite the Quran? Or even listen to the Quran. And if you can't read the Quran as an adult, make the effort to learn to read the Quran. This is your book. This is your guidance. And none of us can say that we're living within our community here in New York City. And you can safely and honestly say, Brother, I don't have the opportunity to learn this book of Allah. At this masjid here and quite a few other masjids, we provide this facility for you. So on the day of Qiyamah, you will be answerable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Studying the seer of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How can you love him if you don't know him? How can you cherish him if you don't know his value to us? How can you remember him if you don't follow his teachings and don't be constantly be reminded of what he would have done? Comes from knowledge. And definitely incorporating the sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in every little form that we can, we make that effort. My dear brothers and sisters, avoid our compromising of our deen. Avoid compromising our obedience to Allah for the achievement of this dunya, for this dunya is fleeting. And our reward with Allah is permanent. Second point, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned loving others solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is important because we live in a society today where our relationship with people our interaction with people, how nice we treat them or how bad we treat them, tend to be based on mutual benefit or shared interest. Seldom we, we just interact with a person 
Very rarely do we interact with a person only because you are a Muslim. I see you are a Muslim, so I want to be around you. Seldom do we meet out to a Muslim, regardless of whether we know anything about them or not, just that we know they are a Muslim. And we treat them the way like we will treat our family and our friends. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved this person only for the sake of Allah. That should be the only criterion. Not that we have nothing in common. Not that there is no benefit to me materialistically. Important things for us to remember because this is how we base our relationship today. The Prophet sallallahu he tells us to choose our friends wisely. Not everybody is going to be our friend, but we should still treat every Muslim with that level of respect. But the people we keep around us, for the sake of Allah, then they should be people who are beneficial to us in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a person is upon the religion of his close friend. You follow the way of your close friend. Many of us will say, my friend drinks, my friend smokes, my friend fornicates, my friend do this, and he do that, and all the haram things, but I don't do it. How long will it take for you to start treading that path, slowly but surely? Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he likened this to a person who is friend with a blacksmith, and a person who is a friend with a person who sells perfume. If you're in a blacksmith shop, and you don't do any of the things that he's doing, you will still leave that shop smelling like him. Smelling like that shop. If you're in an environment of sin and haram, it will start impacting you. Slowly but surely. But if you're in a, the shop of a perfume smeller, whether you use the perfume or not, you will leave that shop smelling nice. Similarly, you have someone who indulges in goodness and obedience to Allah and religiosity around you, little bit but surely, you will be impacted positively by this. Strengthening our brotherhood and sisterhood. The thing that made Islam the phenomenal thing that it became in such a short time was that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the first time that he established the Islamic state of Medina one of the first thing he did was what? Form brotherhood between the Muhajir, the Ansar, the immigrants and the people who were from that land. That they share what they have, those who are from that land. And subhanAllah, that's an entire concept in its own self. SubhanAllah, that is pertaining to us as some of us who were born and grew up here and those who are immigrants to this country and how we interact with each other. As Muslims to each other. We should avoid toxic relationships. Toxic relationships is that we should let go of relationships that are built on sin rather than encourage us guidance to Allah and obedience to Allah. If a friendship involves backbiting, slandering, gossiping, wasting time, frivolous activities, and none of it, nothing part of that relationship and interactions calls you to Allah, then that's not a friendship you should have. Many of us bring our solace and say, you know, I'm friends with him so that I may help to guide him. Then that person is not your friend. He's rather a Muslim that you're trying to help. Because the more you befriend him, you're going to drop to his level. Easier that he's going to raise to your level. It's easier to go downhill than to go uphill. Understand the difference. As a Muslim community, creating spaces for Islamic fellowship. We should join groups together. Islam encourages us to be together. Don't be a one-man army out there. Be part of the jama'ah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Yadullahu fawq al jama'ah. That the hand of Allah is above the community, those who come together in goodness. Be part of a masjid. Many Muslims today you ask them, brother, which masjid are you part of? Oh, I'm not part of no masjid, I go all over the place. How are we able to build bonds when we are like this? How are we able to build closeness when we are like this? This is not my masjid versus your masjid. No, be part of a community, be part of being together. When we look for a job, one of the first things to look for is whether you're good at teamwork, right? Because that is cohesive, that helps to build something. This is what Islam was built upon. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the believers are upon brotherhood. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us that the second part of you tasting the sweetness of Iman is to love a person only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The last and final part is hating to revert to disbelief. Today we are faced with subtle pressures to compromise our Islamic values today in our society. Whether it's through media, our peers, our workplace environments, 
the promotion of ideologies that are opposing to Islam. We want to fit in all of these things. It helps to push us on a slippery slope towards weakening our faith. So what this reverting is saying to us, it doesn't necessarily mean we'll become non-Muslim. No. It means that with small compromising by neglecting maybe a salah or praying it late or involving in doubtful activity might be so haram. Little bit by little bit, we start normalizing sinful behavior. Eventually, we start indulging in the sinful behavior. There's no hate in our heart anymore for this sin. We accept it. It's okay. It's okay. You know, I can now be around people that drink and smoke and fornicate and curse and do all of these filthy things. And I'm okay with that. Because little bit by little bit, this is the traps of shaitan. We need to establish our boundaries to clearly set for ourselves what is acceptable and what isn't acceptable. This is when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying to us, excuse ourselves from, institute, from environments that are haram, politely but firmly. Don't be wavering upon it. This is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he teaches the dua that, Ya muqallib al qulub thabbit qalbi ala deenik. O oh, turner of hearts, we ask of Allah, make my heart firm upon your religion so I'm not shaken. I'm not like a pendulum swinging from one way to the next. Avoid the small compromises, my dear brothers and sisters. Avoid the small compromises because they will lead to, diff to larger compromises and eradication of our deen. My dear brothers and sisters, with this hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam provided us with a clear roadmap to attaining the sweetness of Iman. To understand why we love to be a Muslim, why we love this thing of Islam, why we get closer to him and we love it and we will understand it better through these three qualities. As a Muslim living here today, it is essential for us to be conscious of the unique challenges we face. Because if we don't know our challenges, how will we be able to overcome them, how to combat them? We must actively, collectively cultivate these qualities in our hearts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to love him and his Rasul. Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us to love him and his Rasul more than anything else in the dunya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to love those who are believers only for him and his sake only. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be able to be strong, to walk away from people and friends and the loved ones when they are guiding us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevent our hearts from being being in love with the haram things and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevent us from entering into kufr and prevent us from entering into the fire of Jahannam Ameen Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al anbiya wal mursaleen Habibina wa nabiyina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa ashabihi yajma'in wa man ihtada bi ihsani illa yum iddin amma ba'd Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid Allahumma inna nasaluka ilman nafi'an wa rizqan tayyiban wa amala mutakabbala اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغناء اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من عذاب القبر ومن عذاب الجهنم ومن فتنة المحيا ومات ومن شر فتنة المسيح الدجال أمين اللهم انصر الإسلام المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر إخواننا في فلسطين اللهم احفظهم اللهم انصرهم يا رب العالمين اللهم انصر إخواننا في يمن وفي إيراق وفي أفغانستان وفي بورما وفي الصين وفي كل مكان آمين يا أرحم الراحمين يا غفور يا رحيم آمين عباد الله إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واستعينوا يستجب لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أكبر وأقيموا الصلاة إن صلاة على المؤمنين كتاب موقوتاً